Bismillahirrahmanirrahim Alhamdulillahirrahmanirrahim Rahmanirrahim Maliki Yawmadeen Assalatu wassalam Ala Muhammad Rasulullah Wa Mustafa Amin Wa Ali Wa Sahbihi Ajmarin Ashadu la ilaha illallah Wa la sharika Allah Ashadu an Muhammad Abdu Rasulullah Al-Ladhina Zalifur Kana la abnihi Liyakuna lil'alamin al-Ladhira وبارك رسول كريم عظيم السلط وتاك الليل وإنسى وشيء ونذرة ونحن على ذلك من الشاهدين. That is to say, all praise and thanks and glorification is due to Allah. The praise is due to Allah simply because the praise belongs to Allah. It is His property. Allah has no partners, no associates, no ancestors, no descendants. He has no mother, no father, no daughter, no wife, no son. He rules the universe alone. I witness to that fact. I also witness that Muhammad ibn Abdullah, prayers and peace be upon him, <clears throat> is the messenger of Allah and the seal of the prophets. Surely after this, the best speech is the book of Allah. The best guidance is that of his Rasul Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And the worst of all things is distortions or attempts to change this religion that Allah has made perfect. For attempts to change or, or distort this religion is called bid'ah, where all bid'ah is astray, and all astray will lead one directly to the hellfire. My beloved brothers and my beloved sisters, within the sound of my voice, all praise is certainly due to Allah. The praise is due to Allah because it belongs to Him. Nothing or no one that Allah has created has the ability nor even the right to handle praise. Praise, okay, expressions of appreciation and gratitude, okay. But the praise belongs to Allah. Everything that was created before human beings said, Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah. That's a statement of fact. But when the human beings were created, we were ordered to say, Alhamdulillah. That's, that, that is, that, that's a lam tafsisu, it means it is owned by something. So the praise is the property of Allah. We praise Him, we thank Him, we glorify Him, we need Him, we rely on Him. We beg Him for mercy and help and forgiveness and for facilitation. We ask, we ask Almighty Allah who's upon all the other, even in our secret thoughts, to, to substantiate what we do and for Him to be happy with us. My beloved brothers and sisters, in this deen that all of us have uh, embraced, and we pray to Allah that we have embraced it wholeheartedly like Allah says in the Quran. And Allah doesn't give advice in the Quran. He leaves that to the prophets and the scholars. Allah gives only commandments. When he says, come to Islam wholeheartedly, that means give everything you've got. Unfortunately though, many of us really believe that we uh, totally appreciate this religion. It's impossible. Of course we appreciate it to a degree, but it's impossible to appreciate this religion the way that Prophet Muhammad appreciate the religion. It is impossible to appreciate the religion the way that the Sahaba that surrounded him appreciate the, appreciate the religion. It's impossible for us to appreciate even the way that the, the several succeeding generations after him because we did not see what they saw. We did not go what they went through. It's impossible for us to appreciate Islam the way that, the way that they did. So we can't really internalize, even many times in, in, in our sincerity, we may find it difficult to, to experience kushu in our salat, in our salawat. Why? Because we haven't internalized a real appreciation, a deep appreciation. We have to understand that we did not go through what Muhammad wasallam went through. So we weren't there. We weren't there to see what he went through. We weren't there to see the struggle. We weren't there to see the Muslims persecuted. We weren't there to see what he went through to establish his deen. We were not with him at the, in, the, in the cave hero to, to see and internalize what, what he went through emotionally and spiritually to experience the visibility of Jibril Ali Salam. We weren't there. We weren't there when he had to watch many of his people to, uh, turn against him, his own family members turn against him. We weren't there. We weren't there at Taif when the children were throwing rocks at him. So we can't we can experience that. We weren't there at Uhud when to see his uncle get slaughtered. We weren't there, so it's difficult. We may say that we appreciate it, but we cannot compare ourselves to Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and his appreciation for this deen. We can, there's no harm in trying, there's no harm in trying, 
but we weren't there. We weren't there to see the, the first uh, uh, Shaheed of Islam. We weren't there to watch the women being stretched apart by camels and horses. We didn't see that. We didn't witness Bilal being dragged through the streets. So it was hard for us to, to really appreciate it that, uh, on that level. We can show our appreciation by respecting the religion. We can show our appreciation to Allah by embracing and trying to learn as much from the Quran as possible and to lower our gaze and to, and to be righteous and to make good decisions and to try to pray on time. Kitab al-Maqut. We, 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 um, we, we say our prayers at the exact calculated timing. We can try our best to respect the month of Ramadan and everything connected to it. We can even try to set our alarm so we get up in the middle of the night, in the last third of the night, and demonstrate to Allah that we love Him more than we love our beds. We can try, but we're just not there. No harm in trying, yes. And, and here in America, the people who came to this country, they're from other countries seeking a better life. You can't really appreciate the freedom in this country unless you was there on the, on the slave ships. Or even the African American people who are descendants of slaves can't really appreciate this freedom, not the way that the ancestors did, because they weren't there to see the struggle. They weren't there for the struggle. They didn't understand, so they can't possibly understand. When we, how can we even appreciate our salat? the way the Prophet Muhammad did, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. But he thought that we could when he made the miraculous mirage and he went beyond the low tree. And he was so excited and happy when Allah gave him the order that, that, that oh, oh, Ya Rasulullah, your Ummah, your Ummah must pray offer 50 salawat a day. And he was so happy and excited because you mean to tell me that we get to go directly to Allah 50 times a day. That's beautiful. Everyone would love that. And we know how the story goes. He, we, as he was leaving and exiting the, the, the sacred precincts, Musa alayhi salam asked him, he said, what were you told? He said, we get to pray 50 times a day. He said, no, go back. They're not, going, they're not like you. They're not like, what do you mean they're not like me? And who, who wouldn't want to pray to Allah 50 times a day? Say, so, yeah, but they're going to sin. They don't appreciate Islam the way that you do. They don't love Salat the way that you do. They're going to sin. Go back and have it reduced. And we know about the story where he went back and forth and it was reduced. Then Allah, out of his mercy, out of his kindness, out of, out of his rahmah, he said, teach your ummah that if they offer their salawat, five salawat a day, at the exact calculated time, it will be recorded as if they prayed 50 times a day, subhanAllah. But, but that's still not good enough for us, is it? We still delay our salat, some of us, for, for, for uh, uh, in, in capital reasons. We still even miss a salat. We still don't appreciate it. We still think about doing it sometimes and rush our salat. Yes, we don't sit and dicker and toss me for a little while you know, to ask Allah for something. As Muhammad Sallallahu said, if you make your salat and then you don't ask Allah for something, it's like you haven't even prayed. What's the point in making a, or make a salat and you're not going to ask Allah for something? He's ready to listen. Muhammad the Prophet Sallallahu teaches us that when you're, when you're making salat, you're talking to Allah. When you're reading the Quran, Allah is talking to you. And doesn't he tell us? He says, Kul who Allah Wahab. Kul Amirad Falaf. Kul Amirad al Nat. Kul is singular. He's talking to Allah is talking to the person that's reading and reciting the Quran. When he says Kulu, he's talking to a lot of people or a group. But he says Kul. That means we should take the reading and recitation of the Quran very, very personally so that we can rise to the excellence of our human potential. So my beloved brothers and sisters. We have to understand that unless you were there, you can't really appreciate. You know, one of my favorite movies, and I don't watch a lot of movies, but one of my favorite movies is a movie called The Gladiator. And the emperor was watching the war, and after the, after the battle, his son arrived and said, Father, forgive me, I missed the celebration. He said, son, you missed the war. We, we missed the war. We're here to celebrate Islam, right? We're here to celebrate the beauty. We're on, this is Yom Jumah. This is one of our one of our Eids. Muslims have 54 holidays a year. 
And this is this is one of the other 52, other than Elo, Aha, Elo, Elo, Victor. The, the, the Jew is an E, so we should be celebrating. Yeah, we're celebrating, it's, we're celebrating Juma, but we miss the war. We weren't there to see the battles. However, we should struggle to rise to that, to that belief, rise to that understanding, rise to that appreciation. Why am I saying this, my beloved brothers and my beloved sisters? And I've been here several times in this beautiful masjid. And, and, and seeking support for the mission that Allah has entrusted and entrusted and commanded me to lead. And every single time the brothers and sisters here uh, uh, responded with help and support and making dua every time. So what gives me the courage to come back? Because I'm coming back with a message that Master the Tawheed, SubhanAllah, it grew out of, uh, out of almost nothing. I can't say out of nothing. Because in order to do something for nothing, you have to be Allah. Everybody starts with something. Human beings start with something. When our wives and our mothers and grandmothers, when they bake a cake, they said they can bake it from scratch. They didn't bake it from zero. They had something to start with. Allah brought about this creation with nothing to start with except his will. He said, kum. And then what happened when he said, kum? Fire kum. That's right. Allah can do that. We can't do it. We have to have something to start with. So Master the Tawheed, it didn't start from nothing, it started from something. It started from something. It used to be a kinesa, it was a church. And, it, and only Allah could have possibly known that that preacher that was building that church wasn't really building the church. He didn't know that he was building a masjid, subhanAllah. Yet that was Allah's decree. Because Allah knew that after so many decades and, and over 125 churches in that area, there was no masjid until Master and Tawheed came. Yes, but you didn't see the struggle. So when I come here, my beloved brothers and sisters within the sound of my voice, and I'm seeking support for what we're doing, you don't understand my passion. You don't understand it because you weren't there for the struggle. I understand. I'm not offended. SubhanAllah, because I understand that you weren't there to see what it was like when there was no fence around the property. You, I understand that you don't know what it was like when there was mud and gravel uh, and, and mud water on, 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 the, on the place that is now a parking lot that is paved. You, you, wouldn't understand, you, didn't, you weren't there to see that struggle. You weren't there when the Jumu'ah prayer was only three or four people. You weren't there to see that struggle. You weren't there when we only had $130 and had to figure out a way to pay off a building that cost almost a half a million dollars. You weren't there for that struggle. You weren't there to see me sleeping on floors and eating trail mix and spring water and calling it dinner. You weren't there to me to be separated from my family for weeks and months at a time just trying to establish something for Islam, not for myself but for Islam, and not only for the people that are alive today, the, the Master of Tawheed, just like this beautiful Master. It's not just for the people that are Musaleen of today. It's not even only for the children that pray here today. It's for the generations yet unborn. That is the spirit and institution of Salat al -Jariya. Don't you understand? Salat al is more than just money that you give that somebody gets buy something later. Sadiq al is any good deed that you do that people will benefit from in generations to come. And the Sadiq al is what you may call a, a beneficial legacy. Are we leaving a beneficial legacy? That's what the struggle is for. That's the same thing that beautiful brothers and sisters coming together to expand and build another beautiful master right here on this very spot. That's Sadiq al Master of Tawheed is built on the spirit and the energy and the motivation and the belief and the determination of knowing the value of Sonic Jariah. Yes, and just so we continue to strive forward, anybody can open up a little room and all you do is pray and go home. But yet, Muslims are supposed to be progressive people. Muhammad the Prophet وسلم, and the Sahaba that surrounded him, they were progressive. He wasn't just satisfied just to have some soldiers that knew how to fight. He wasn't satisfied just to have someone who knew how to memorize the Quran. He wanted someone who was progressive. So he sent his religious and courageous warriors 
out to conquer countries for Islam. So the world can stand, the world can say, La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah. It's easy, that's the easy way out. Let's just have some place to pray, and then we go home and mind our own business. But we are Muslims, we're progressive, because we want to epitomize the value and the legacy of Muhammad Ibn Abdullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. But you have, you would have had to have been there. If you had been there and seen the struggle, you would understand why I come so often to ask, not only ask you, I'm not asking you, I am asking Allah to open up your heart to help us continue to move forward. I'm asking Almighty Allah to open your hearts to help us continue to make progress. And don't think for one minute that if you help another effort that is still connected to Islam, that it will, de it will decrease the effort that you're doing here. Don't think for one second that if you contribute to another masjid, it takes away from what you're building. It's the other way around. Allah will enhance and improve and increase and multiply what you're trying to do because all of it is for the love and for the pleasure of Almighty Allah. That is our duty. That is our charge. That's what gives me the spirit. That's what gives me the courage to come back and ask you again. You make du'a, the same du'a that I'm making, and ask Allah to open up your heart to help us raise the thousands of dollars that we need to just keep moving forward. We're not asking for a handout. We're only asking for a hand. Let me conclude with this little true story. I was, I was called to drive to, I mean, to fly to Atlanta, Georgia one day to speak at a family conference. And when I got on the train to travel to uh, the, 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 uh, the, the, the luggage, to pick up my luggage, you know, on the train you have these poles you hang on to. You hang on to the pole because there's not a lot of seats. So there was an elderly lady, much older than me, holding on to the same pole. And I had my briefcase in one hand and I was holding on to the pole. When the, plane, when the train took off, it jerked. And when it jerked, the lady lost her grip. And she began to fall. Instinctively, now I know brothers say you're not supposed to touch sisters, but instinctively, I dropped my briefcase. And I reached down and I grabbed the sister, and I held on to her until she retained her grip. And she said, thank you, Sonny. Uh, I really appreciate that. I said, no problem, sister. Listen to this because it's much easier to hold you up than to pick you up. Don't wait till somebody falls and then try to break your back, try to help them. Master Tawheed is not falling, it's just losing a grip. This master in here, the king would master is not falling, certainly. It needs a grip, so we need to always, don't put limitations on yourself. Don't put limitations on how you would help, how much you would help, because Allah never fails to help. He's closer than our juggler vein. Allah always helps. And the prophet, peace be upon him, said, if you ask Allah for something that someone else will also benefit from, Allah will readily grant it to you. So my beloved brothers and my beloved sisters, don't walk past our table at the end of the salat, after we make our sunnahs and, and, and cry to Allah to give us strength and determination. Don't walk past the table. If you don't have anything to offer, subhanAllah, at least make a dua. The most, the, the, the most powerful and effective weapon and tool that Allah has given a believing Muslim is a dua. Muhammad the Prophet وسلم, changed the whole world with a dua. And certainly we can do the same thing. So if you don't have anything to offer financially, at least make a dua for the success of this mission. Because it is not for us, it's not for our children, it's not even for our grandchildren. It's for our grandchildren's great-grandchildren because that's why we're here today. Muhammad the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi he gave dawah and he worked and he sweated and he bled and he cried tears, blood, sweat and tears on the sands of Arabia so we could be here today. You think it was an accident? You think he just said, let's be Muslim, assalamu alaikum? But he worked and he sacrificed and he struggled and he did not care and he, and he loved death more than he loved life. And we should be very, very careful that we don't contradict ourselves and be afraid of, of shaitan's wiggling finger. We should know that Almighty Allah has something better for us and he always gives us more than we ask for. We pray Allah will accept the best of our deeds and bring us to the worst of them. Puli kali hala astaghfirullah. La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.